Welcome back to Haxorath Adventures. I'm your DM, Claudia, and I'm here with my merry band of players. We have Cam. Uh, Kenny, yes, that's fine. We have Mars. Um, Madras. And last but not least, Talia. Maxwell. Before we get into it, we'll start with a recap on our last episode. Our adventure began when our three heroes met Fafarin the Barkeep in the Brazen Ball Tavern. They were soon joined by Gundren, who was traveling on behalf of the Hammerfeld Dwarfs with a human companion to the nearby town of Phandalin. After learning that Fafarin forgot to send a letter with the men for his fiancée, our adventurers decided to take the letter and deliver it themselves. On the way, they found the Hammerfell cart had been attacked and got ambushed by two goblin bandits after peacefully putting down a suffering donkey. Kenya brutally killed one, severely wounded the other, and after a dramatic attempt to chase and apprehend the bandit, our heroes discovered the Cragmore hideout. By feeding starving wolves and somehow managing to convince a goblin guard that Kenya was the daughter of King Grawl, our adventurers then killed the hideout leader and his friends to rescue the beloved Dilf. They learned that Gundren was taken to the Cragmore castle, so the party of four trekked back to the Bandari trading post to ask around only to discover that the settlement is under attack. We now find ourselves looking down into the Bandari trading post. The tavern is on fire. The ship crew and Fafarin are engaged in battle with the bandits, and Max's friend Oscar is dead. Mechanically, the party has gained a few hit points and spell slots back during their journey back into town, including Sildar, who has a dagger in his hand that he took from one of the goblin guards. Dressed only in his underwear and Madras's cape, he looks down as he surveys the battle. He turns to the party and he says, I don't know about you, but I've had it up to my ears with these goblins. I'm gonna fucking kill them. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and just starts running. <laughs> as you all look down at the chaos, you can see Fafarin is about 120 feet ahead of you on the left-hand side of the settlement where the Brazen Bold Tavern burns behind him. He has his axe out, fighting five goblins. Ahead of you, about 200 foot away and next to the port, three crew members from Oscar's ship are fighting six goblin bandits and Oscar is draped against a crate near them dead. They all seem like they're handling their own battles well. The more pressing matter to you guys is what is going on closer to where you stand. So about 30 feet in front of you, you can see three hordes of goblins. Mechanically, we're going to do the fight in hordes. That way it's not going to be difficult having like 20 goblins all going separately. Uh So there's one group of five to the right hand side that are smashing through crates of fresh vegetables. The group of four Uh goblins in the middle are jumping up and down on musical instruments belonging to the musicians that Madras traveled to Bandari trading post with. And on the Uh left is another horde of five goblins. One of them is very familiar to you. (laughs) He turns to look at the four of you and throws you up a very crisp middle finger. (laughs) Fuck you! And can you all roll initiative for me, please? Yes. D20? Um, I got a 20! A D- I got a D20. Damn! Wait, I have to roll. I got 11. Can you got a 30? Oh. oh, she didn't get it. I did get Oh, I got a 20 naturally. So. Okay. Uh, I got 11. Um, how many feet is in between Max and Oscar right now? About 200. So if you go over there, you'll just get completely slaughtered. Okay. Cool. Great. She's on a Metaris Rampage Fest anyway, she's gonna kill everyone. Max is displeased. As she should be, her friend is dead. Can he have, is there are very it? few people that Max actually highly values and cares about. Up first with a nat 20 is Madras. Okay. What you gonna do? So like I said, to the left there's a group of five. Straight in front of you is a group of four, and to the right is a group of five. Hmm. Well, I think Madras is personally pissed off by the little fuck you guy now because of all of this, so she's gonna go after him in that group first. Okay. Okay, let's hope this is something good. 17! Yeah. That hits, that hits, so you can roll your damage. Okay. One! Oh, oh, no! Oh, with my attack bonus, then it's three. Okay, it's something. Okay, so at least you got the fuck you guy down to one hit point, so he's like, Oh, fuck you! All right, so next up is this goblin horde that's right on the right-hand side. They're going to go for Kenya. Did you say you ran forward? I did. I was hoping you wouldn't remember. (laughs) All right, they're going to go for you. Does a 13 hit? Yeah. 
So th that would be eight damage to you. Oh! Ooh. Does that mean Kenya's dead? No, no, no. Kenya, Kenya's standing. She goes, ow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next and up. And you still have some healing potions from last time. I do remember that. I do. I do have those healing potions. I was just looking at them. Uh, my <laughs> Max my idea to thunder wave is gone. <laughs> Okay, so next up is the fuck you guy. He rolled a four. I'm assuming that does not hit you, Madras. Oh yeah, I have a 13 armor cost. Oof. So he pulls out his knife after you shot him in the shoulder. He just says, fuck you! And just fucking blows it and he misses. So Kenya, that's you. Okay, um, I'm gonna take one of my healing potions. <laughs> you can do that as a, as a bonus action, so you can also take your action. Um... I'm gonna cast. Okay, so how far are we from this horde? What? Uh, the horde that just attacked you? Yeah. They would have just run up to you, so you're right in the midst of them. They're just stabbing at you. Okay, I cast Thunder Wave then, and they make a Constitution saving throw. They need to get a 15. Oof. Nice. They got a 5. 2d8 damage. Oof. Okay. And they are pushed 10 feet away from you. Uh, that is a 3 and a 1, so they take 4 damage. Oh, plus seven. I so have a... eleven damage. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What, eleven damage, and they are pushed ten feet away from you, from away from me. And Kenya shouts, "No, fuck you!" <laughs> Woo. Okay, so she, you like <clears throat> completely. She tosses this like potion to her lips, like tugs it back, tosses it behind her, and just stomps. <laughs> okay, so you've completely killed two of them, and one is on death's door. Yeah. <laughs> Now I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, I'm back up to full. I was at one hit point. Oh my god. <laughs> Ooh. You would die. <laughs> so next up is that middle horde. Um, they're gonna go after you, Max. Max screams, I'm gonna kill all you bastards before they do anything. Oh, She's real mad, guys. Does a 15 hit you? Unfortunately, yes. Oh, okay. It does. <laughs> and they rolled a 1, so that's just 4 damage to you. Sweet. So they they run forward and they go and stab you, but they're so short they're just kind of stabbing you in the leg. And then Max, that's your turn. All right. Um, Max is going to draw out her short sword um, and go to attack this four person goblin horde. We got nine. Yeah, you haven't got any attack bonuses on that. Oh, so I've got a plus four attack bonus. That hits. You almost yeah. didn't hit. They have an AC of ten. <laughs> Damn, that would have been rough. <laughs> yeah, just just she just misses all of these hits. Roll your damage. Um, I forgot to have fruit snack attack. Uh, you want fruit snack to attack after Max? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. I love fruit snack. Uh, the damage is nine. Oof. Okay. It's the pure rage fueling Max. <laughs> Okay, so you've completely killed two of them, and one of them is down to one hit point. Oof. So you know, waste these motherfuckers. Is Free Snack close enough to attack that one that's on one hit point? Yep, you can roll to attack that one. You got a 12. You got 12? That hits? He does 1d4, so that, that's gonna get him down anyway. Even if he just rolls one, Which he did, but he gets that one hit point now. Yep, so he's completely killed that one guy. <laughs> Go Free Snack! <laughs> Go Free Snack. He just gouges his eye out. <laughs> that thing that your cat does whenever, like, he gets real scared, he goes, <laughs> Okay, so next up we have Silda. He's going to... The Dilf! The Dilf! He's going to know that Max would give all of her bacon to Fruit Snack right now. She just doesn't have any bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Fruit Snack okay. is, is trying to get to the Blazing Bold because he wants to see if there's any bacon left in the fire. And Kenya can, like, sense this. And she's like, Fruit Snack! Fruit Snack! <laughs> <laughs> Sildar's gonna go after that group with the fuck you guy in there. He got a 16 to hit, so he hits. He's only got a dagger, so he's not gonna do much damage. But he got three, so he doesn't like the way that that guy just said fuck you to you guys, so he's gonna just kill him. Oh, he's protective. He's protective, so he's gonna run off and he's gonna kill the fuck you guy. So he's dead, and then he has hurt another guy as well. He just goes... Watch what you're saying to my friends, buddy. And just pulls out this knife and just stabs it right in his face. Dance, when are we friends? <laughs> Ooh, that's sexy. <laughs> All right, Madra, so back up to you. Okay. Um, she's going to go after one of the, the goblins that are left. <laughs> so pulls back her bow. I got a five on the D20. Oh, no. <laughs> Not hitting. 
pull your bow back, you aim it, and you just get so distracted by the way that you're probably aiming at the fuck you guy. Sildar kills him, and then you're like, what? And then you just what? shoot one off in the air. Goblin horde number, <laughs> horde number three, uh, they're gonna go after you again, Kenya. Of course they are. They they're, not, got, they're not a little bit afraid. They only got a six plus a two. Hit. That does not hit. That does not hit. They get Kenya pounds for test. Yeah, they're so distracted by the fact that a cat just went over and killed one of the guys that they're just so distracted by this cat, they're just a bit too afraid they're to go even, forward. They're <laughs> not even a little bit afraid of the fact that she just stomped and pushed people ten feet away from her. That too. Mostly the cat. They don't see a cat every day. <laughs> I think okay. it's important. I don't think I mentioned this last time, but, but Pitsnap is missing an ear. Which I think just adds to this. He's like, he's oh, so oh. feral. I love it. <laughs> The Horde is gonna go after... We're gonna say you miss Madras, so they're gonna go after Silda. Okay. Uh-oh. They got I'm a 19. They no, got... they do. They got no! a 19. No! Max will use all of her potions of healing to keep this still alive. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but he's, but he's... she wouldn't heal us last, camp, like last meeting. He's still shirtless, so he doesn't really have much of an AC right now. Um... How many are so like what eight twelve six? Ugh. Okay, <laughs> okay, he's pretty hurt. So they just went for oh, him. Fuck. They they stabbed the fuck you guy. That's their buddy. Cause you guys didn't kill him last session. So they he's the one that rounded up all these goblins and attacked the town. And he was kind of <laughs> their new little yeah. You guys didn't kill him. So this is why this is happening. You know what? I was like <laughs> I was like Max would have stabbed him, but Max is just being nice because of the fucking donkey thing. Kenya, Kenya, like, turns and looks at Magis over her shoulder. This is what happens when we don't kill them. Kenya, oh, that's, just... that's your turn. Okay, so in front of me, I know that I have that one horde in front of me, but I can see more fight happening beyond, though, like, with Farfarin and everything. So I'm going to want to save my spell slot. I'm going to cast the cantrip Shocking Grasp. Mm -hmm. uh, lightning springs from your hand delivers shock to a creature you try and touch. Make a melee spell attack against the target. You advance on this pack roll. The target is wearing armor made of metal. Are they wearing armor? Uh, no. Okay, so she's going to try to... Whichever one looks more hurt, she's going to try to um, attack. She gets a... They both have equal HP. They both have four HP each. She got a nine to hit, which I don't think is going to hit. Do you have any attack bonus on that? No, I'm not strong. <laughs> But, uh, Fruit Smack is gonna take a claw attack. Or, um, Fruit Smack's gonna give me a health action. I'm gonna roll with advantage. That works. I got a nat 20. Nat 20, oh, okay. Okay, so it's gonna be 2d8 lightning damage. That's gonna be 4 plus 7. That dead. Tell me how you kill the whole wood. Kenya, like, chugs this drink, throws it down, thunder raves them. They immediately try to attack her, and she just kind of, like, sidesteps and whips lightning out of her hand and just yanks him to the ground. And then she turns around and she looks at Madras and she goes, we're killing him next time. And then starts to, she uses her movement to run to the Farfarin. Gnarly. And, uh, He's about 120 feet away. Uh, I'm just going to use my movement for this. So I'll get 30 feet closer to him. Uh, so it's the second horde. They're going after you again, Max. That is a, mm, a six to hit. <laughs> She's got 12 armor claws. Yeah, so. so they miss. They're kind of distracted by the fact that their friends were just mortally just destroyed <laughs> behind them. Um, they're just they just be. they just distracted. They swing and they miss. Uh, and then that just goes to your turn. All right, Max is going to take the biggest fucking angriest swing that she can at these last two fuckers. Because she's like, nah, I am on a murderous rampage. I'm going to kill everyone. She does have a brief thought in the back of her mind that she should have stabbed that guy instead of tying him up. <laughs> but uh, she's not really going to sit on it. So I'm going to roll. And it is... We hit 12, exactly. Yep, that hits. <laughs> and then we get 8. You take your sword and you just swing through both of them, just chop both of their heads off. They're both dead. Let it be known that uh, Max once again power poses and is like, fuck you. <laughs> yes, the power pose. So it's Sildar's turn, so he's going to go after this last horde that him and Madras have been going for. He yes. just hits. He's just got his little crappy little dagger. His he, little kitchen knife. He gets them for six. He actually cleaved through one that was almost dead and got the other one. So there's two left of those. So there's just two goblins left in that first horde. And that is your turn. 
Um, Madras is gonna fire for the one that it, that he hit, that is almost down. Ooh, that's a six plus two, so that's gonna be an eight. That doesn't hit either. <laughs> Madras just miss- internalizing what everybody has said to her. Her hands are now a little shaky. She's feeling guilty. She's feeling emotional. She pulls back her bow, fires, and misses, and is humiliated by said fact. Oof, so that horde is now going to come and attack you again, then. R.I.P. They got an 18 to hit? Oh, yeah, that hits. I have a 13. Oh, and there's only two of them left, so they just hit you for two damage. Okay, so that takes me down to an 8. I mean, I have a 10 hit point, so mm-hmm. down to an 8. So that's you now, Kenya? So as Kenya's running, she's going to run her next 30 feet to get to uh, far friend because she trusts her friends behind her. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, she's going to cast the cantrip blade ward on herself. You extend your hand and trace a single ward thing up the air. For the end of your next turn, you have resistance against bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage dealt by weapon attacks. I'm kind of anticipating a little bit of attacks as I'm running towards him. And then, yeah, we're just going to run it. Can you just quickly roll me another initiative if you're leaving this battle and going into this next one? Yeah. Uh, 19 plus 2. So mechanically, right now, he's killed three of them. There's only two left standing in his, just so you know. When we get there, Max, that is your turn. Max sees that um, her Dilf is struggling, and she uh, is very terrified that he might almost die again. So she's going to head over to that horde um, and swing her short sword again, because it seems to be very successful at goblin killing, and she (laughs) likes that about it. Madras is incredibly grateful for her help. And then, uh, as you pull your sword out, Sildar turns to you and says, Is your sword the goblin killer? Fuck yeah, it's the goblin slaughterer. Uh, 15. 15, that hits. 8 damage again. (laughs) Max is, like, rushing over, takes this massive big swipe of her sword across, just thinking that she'll kind of, like, well, it's sharp, so she doesn't, but she isn't the brightest person, so she thinks it kind of will just bop them in the head and they'll back off a little bit so that, that she can swipe again. But that one swipe takes them out real fucking hard. Impressive. Yeah, she, she doesn't really understand which sides are sharp. She thinks all of the sides are somewhat pointy and therefore must be sharp. <laughs> and she swipes off two heads again because she was trying to smack them in the head, basically. Triumphant, she wants to get power poses, and then she taps the dilf on the shoulder like with her hand and is like, I'm a great goblin slaughterer. He watches this and goes, huzzah! And then he taps you back and heals you for two hit points. <laughs> that was his turn. He's going to also start to make a dash action on his turn back to where Fafarin is fighting the last two goblins back there. That's you, Madras. Can Madras take one of the goblins' like weapons? Yeah, um, they just have daggers on them, so you can add that if you yeah. want. It's just 1d4 yeah. one, one piercing damage. Yeah, I'm going to add that in, just okay. as a little precautionary. Okay, yeah. Um, she just, well, just in case, just in case of emergencies. You never know. She takes one of the daggers from the dead bodies, still feeling immensely guilty for being very um, unsuccessful in battle, and that her choice of mercy previously has now led <laughs> to so much death and destruction. And with that, she's going to dash forth to help with the Farfarin battle. So can you dash- for initiative? Yep, you can roll into initiative as well. One! (laughs) Oh. Kenya, that's you. I would say it's 120 feet and you're taking dash action. So you would be in the midst of battle right now with those last two goblins. Kenya is going to... um, She's going to cast another Shocking Grass. Uh, 14. Yes, it hits. Nine. (laughs) You you kill kill them both. And then she looks at the far front. Are you okay? (laughs) He's in a rage, so his eyes are just blazing. He's a barbarian, and he's uh-huh. in the midst of rage right now. His nose is bleeding. He goes, uh... Yeah, he's she, just... like, she goes like, are you okay? And then they make eye contact, and she goes, ah! They just, <laughs> they just both look at each other, just go, ah! <laughs> so in that initiative, we'll go to Max. Max, are you wanting to dash over? Max actually makes a choice to dash over towards Oscar, I think. He's 200 feet over to the right, so you can you can make it over there. Yeah, so I, she's I gonna um, dash a towards- map that you drunk. The West is a little dead by Oscar? Mm-hmm. What's going he's on dead. there? He's dead. He's dead. 
Um, yeah, so she's gonna sprint over to Oscar um, and take his dead body into her arms. There's a, a few tears streaming down her face, but she will not acknowledge that they are there. And she's kind of just having a moment with him, I'm gonna say, because she's pretty sad that he's dead. She was in the orphanage, right? That was the mm -hmm. thing. She valued him a lot, and so she's gonna have a moment with him crying to mourn her friend. Okay. Aww, rip Oscar. So Silda, he is still running towards Fafarin, but he's gonna look over at you. He can't really do anything, but he's just gonna look over uh, as he continues to reach that initiative. That battle is over. Um, we're just gonna go to Madras. Is there anything you wanna do in your initiative? If she makes it to that area where the battle has just concluded, she looks at Kenya and Fafarin and is like, is everyone? <gasps> All right. <sighs> like heavy breaths, heavy breaths. Out yeah. of wind, out of breath. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm fine. He's angry. Um, and there are more fighting happening over there. Everything's falling apart, it seems. No, no, no. We got this under control. First rule of battle: you don't let them know that you're panicked. Fafarin right. will look at you with his burning tavern behind him, and he says, "Hey, uh, what's the the distance on that there bow? Far enough, I guess." He'll point over to where the now only two crew members are fighting one last goblin. Yes, I will roll by attack. 20! Oh my god! 20, not, tw not 20. <laughs> okay. 20, not roll, 20. Roll double damage. 8 plus 2. Yeah, so you not only kill this one last goblin, you completely obliterate him. How do you want to do it? I'm going to go for just straight through the neck shot. Like, just straight oh. through the neck. Completely... <laughs> It, just like straight through the neck and like whatever goblin spine he has, it's gonna just tear right through it. Fuck I like him to up. imagine that a person's like, how long can that go? And Mandra's just like, far enough and just <laughs> straight in this guy's <laughs> neck. <laughs> it's kind of badass. That's what happened. <laughs> far enough. Fafarin watches you do this and as he watches this last guy fall, just the rage just leaves his eyes. And um, we're out of initiative now. All the goblins are dead. Oscar rolled three death fails, so he is dead. One of the crew members is also down. He has two death fails, so he has... You can either revive him or he might roll to win. Fafarin turns around and just looks at his burning tavern. Kenya has fruit snack tucked up in her arms now, and she's licking her hand and then petting his hair to get it to like, lay down <laughs> because he's all puffed up. And she's like, calm down, fruit snack. So um, I think that yeah. Sildar's gonna run over to that last crew member from Oscar's ship and just touch him just for... He'll give his last 3 HP to that guy just to bring him up from the dead. Sildar's a nice dude as well. What happened? Who are you asking, for, Farron? Yeah. So uh, as you look at him, there is a tear running down his face and he just says, um, I was serving lunch to the gentleman by the port. And a bottle came through the window on fire. We managed to get out, and all of these goblins are running down the hill and just started attacking us, screaming about an attack on their hideout. It was us. We Magus's face falls as the realization that it was on them hits her. And with a heavy heart and heavy sigh, she just goes, I'm so sorry. That's not just your fault, man. Kenya turns to Farfarin and she like holds her hand out to Madras and she explains, we were going to that town that you told us to. Uh, we were being real cautious, real careful, and we came upon a carriage that had tipped on its side and there was a dying donkey. And so we went into the forest to figure out who had done this, especially considering that, that box that you gave that, 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 short, that short man, it was there and it was empty. So we we tracked down these two people that were these two goblins that were shooting us in the woods and we killed one of them and we greatly injured the other one, the one that was like shot with fuck you at us. Yeah, quite rude. We ended up tying him to a tree. We wanted to kill him, but Madras, with a big heart, decided that maybe we should spare him and just leave him tied up while we figured things out. And obviously that didn't work out well. But we saved that man over there, and she, like, points at the dilf that had just, like, resurrected the dude, and she's like, we honestly tried our best, and then we, we turned around because we needed to get back here. 
Um, he just wipes the blood from his nose and, and he looks over at Madras and he says, Don't worry, I I would have done the same thing. I wouldn't have killed anyone in cold blood, even even if it was a goblin. If I'd known, I would have made a different choice. Maybe. You know, things can be replaced, but people can't. Can we give you gold to rebuild your tavern? Anything. What can we do? Can you both roll me a perception check, please? 11 plus 11. I got an 8. I got 12. You look over into the burning building. In what used to be the back room, you see Mm -hmm. a chainmail bag of holding. And you runs inside. Madras um, screams that in sheer confusion and terror of the fact that Kenya has just run into a burning building. (laughs) And she is reluctantly moving closer to the door and she's like, what are you doing? I see something sparkling. (laughs) That's not a good response. (laughs) She's going to go in with that, but Madras had to like complain about it first. So she's going to go in too. So if you're going to go in, can you both roll me either and... Uh, acrobatics or survival check for me. Okay, I got an 11 plus 3, so 14. I got a 2, but plus 5. <laughs> uh, I was so confident. You, you both get in there and you retrieve the bag of holding. You take just 2 damage. Yeah, just 2. And then can you roll me roll th- that for me again to get out? 10. 18 plus 18? um 3, okay. so... I was like, yeah, I'm proficient in survival. <laughs> <laughs> you both get out just fine. Fafarin kind of looks... He has no idea what just happened. He just watched two people run into a burning building. What, what are you doing? Kenya's like slapping a fire <laughs> out of her cloak. Madras is just like freaking out and she's like shaking from like the rush of what she's just done. Kenya's like, I got this fan. <gasps> So he looks down at your hands at this chainmail little bag of holding and he said, you got that for me? I don't know what else we can save, but if I could save something, I'd want to. So he takes this little bag of holding and he, he's massive. He's eight foot tall. He holds it in his massive hands and he says, everything that is most precious to me is, is in this bag. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad we could save something, and I'm even more glad that it's something important. I'm going to say that Madras, because she's come to think of this as like a symbol of affection, she sticks her hand out and wiggles <laughs> her fingers in his direction. Can, can you roll a persuasion check for me? <laughs> yes, of course. Okay, I got a nine. That's okay, she doesn't have any charisma, so it's nine. But she no, no, no. I've given you a help action by holding <laughs> my own hand and wiggling my fingers, so you can roll it again. You can roll it again. Okay. Like oh, he I sees. Got one. I got one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're you're both there, just wiggling your fingers at him. Um, he he just puts that bag of holding in his hands and just kind of just puts his massive his fingers probably like two inches width and just puts it just in both of the palms of both of your hands and just goes okay with that Max is is tearing up at this by the way she's tearing up we're gonna go over to Max and you're holding Oscar's dead body he's dead dead Um, but Silda will walk towards you and he's gonna bend down and just brush his hands against Oscar's eyes just trying to lay on hands to bring him up but nothing he just puts his hand on your shoulder and says was he close to you? yeah we spent a lot of years together when I was young you know he'd always give me a ride wherever I wanted to go as long as it was kind of on the way he gave me a ride here and I was gonna see him later and I guess I am seeing him but it's not how I expected. He nods his head and he says, Well, he's with the gods now. If he's a man of the of the water, then I'm sure Cord or whatever god that he looks up to is, is going to take good care of him now. I just, I think I needed to look for a moment and know, you know? She kind of like looks at him and she's kind of like, Maybe we should go see what those idiots are up to because she glances behind her shoulder and is like looking at these two idiots wiggling their fingers with this fucking finger in their palm and is like, what? So she would very carefully put him on the ground because she hasn't decided what she's going to do with the dead body before she um, 
moves, she definitely pats down his pockets if he's got anything in them. <laughs> as much as she loves him, uh, she's still gonna rack his shit. In his pocket, he just has 10 gold pieces and a diamond, if you oh. would like to pocket that. So as you're gonna walk back to the group, the two crew members kind of nod to you and they head over to Oscar to start kind of picking him up. They're planning to get him back on the boat. Sildar just talks to you as you head over and he says, I'm so angry. So he... I wanted to kill that guy, but the stupid donkey thing happened and now you lost a friend too, right? He he nods. He says, they said that Gundrum was taken to the Cragmore Castle. I need to find them. I think, do you need company? Because I could shed some more goblin blood and smile about it honestly so for the first time since you killed the last goblins he smiles and he, he laughs and he says let's see about this tavern make sure that friend for Farron is set and we'll bring it up but i think we need to find gundren i'm sure he'll be fine we just need to find him and and then we'll all go to sandalin and we can uh deliver that letter that those two words will exist with so yeah, he nods, he gives you a bit of a pat on the back, he knows you're upset about your friend. Um, so you go over to the group of them, Fafarin kind of notices you're there, he was kind of looking during this kind of strange moment he's been having with Kenya and Mattress. Um, he knew that your friend was dead, um, so he just kind of offers you a small smile and says, um, thank you, thank you both as well. Max, who is happy for the Dilf to see that she has emotions, but not happy for anyone else to say it, instead of uh, nodding in acknowledgement, goes, hey, that bacon from earlier is probably really crispy now, right? He laughs even though, you know, his whole house is, is ruined. He just says, I have, uh, I have a storeroom in the back. I'll, I'll see if I can fix us up some food. I have nowhere for you to sleep tonight, but maybe we can make a fire and heal and decide what we're going to do next. I already know what we're going to do next, guys. Dilk's friend has been taken, and he's got to find his friend, and let's be real, going to Sandalin did not go well the first time, so I feel like it's not going to go well the second time. How can we help a save his friend? I feel like going... we had a mission to send this letter. And if we do anything, we're going to need a well-thought-out plan. I, Listen, I know you're plans. a little bit upset that I ran into that fire building over there, but it ended up fine. I'd rather know whether else get hurt. Even you. Oh. And you. <laughs> she looks at them both. Can you all roll me a perception check for me? 17, naturally, 17. Three. <laughs> 17. <laughs> it is not very wise. Kenya, you miss this, but Max, and especially you, Madras, can just hear from across the Bandari trading post those three crew members that are carrying Oscar's body onto the boat. They're looking over at you, Madras, and you can just hear mm -hmm. them say... This wouldn't have happened if that swamp scum wasn't here. <gasps> oh, wow. Okay. Um, oh, Madras, Madras hears that and her, her entire demeanor completely shifts. Where there was once a light heart, not a light hardness, because she was still very heavy after the battle and the choices they've made, but where there was like an affection and a glow from like being with her friends, making a connection, her entire demeanor just sinks down, shoulders slumped face in clear um, pain and sadness and just like a discomfort washes over her at what she um, has heard. With that, um, I'm going to roll in the background here, but Madras, can you just give me a deception check yeah, just to see fine. if Silda and Fafarin are going to notice this? I rolled a 13. Okay. Uh, Max, seeing Madras's reaction and hearing the comment, uh, yells across to those crew members and goes, Fucking drop Oscar now in a very aggressive voice. Um, it and was kind of like hits in that direction. What's happening? Well, these it's nothing. It doesn't seem like nothing. Don't deserve the right to carry my friend off. Did they do something to Oscar? No, they're just scumbags. They're not good people. Yeah, Madras is looking at her with a look that is just like, don't say it. Don't bring it up. Like for okay, her. So, so Kenya looks at Max and she like studies her for a second and like seeing and like hearing the resolve in her voice she holds up her hand in the same way that she did with the shocking grasp and she goes you heard her so as you do that for gonna pull out his axe and just chase down these and just say hey get out of here drop that boy get out your type aren't welcome here can you all roll me intimidation checks please do i get advantage because i killed so many people <laughs> Uh, I think you can all roll with advantage for this. 
Nat 20. I got a 5. Max I got a 19. not very intimidating. I got a 19. And 5. So both Max and Silda actually got Nat 20s on that. So you get the intimidation. No. <laughs> yep. So they're just going to drop Oscar's body and just get back on the boat and start sailing away. They're kind of looking at you with daggers, Madras. Obviously, where they came from is not, not. very kind to your people. Um, yeah, like, imagine that. Um... Max is raising <laughs> double middle fingers at these motherfuckers. She's like, I just spent a week on a boat with you and I hate you all. Kenya and uh, Fruit Snack are both carrying very confused expressions, but I feel like the reason why Kenya was slightly less into because she got a 19, so she ended up with like a dirty 20. The entire reason why Kenya didn't end up with like a natural 20 was because while she looks like confused and terrifying, Fruit Snack is perched over her shoulder, <laughs> um, slightly damp and just looking very confused. So it's it's slightly cute. <laughs> Madrish just has a look of extreme discomfort and sorrow about her. Kenya passes Madras fruit snack and goes, fruit snack, be nice. Here you go. He'll help you. <laughs> With a small, slightly there smile, Madras just replies, thank you. And starts petting fruit snack down. She's not even doing it in a natural way. She's like dragging her whole hand just like across <laughs> one section of him, like very awkwardly. Fruit snack is purring, but like not because she he enjoys it, but because he knows it's what it's he's supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, Max is uh gonna look a little defeated for a moment and be like, We have to do something with Oscar. I can't just leave him here. We can give him we can give him a good old backwards funeral. Whatever you think he would like the most. Sildar is going to go forward and just pick up Oscar's body and say, I think between us we can manage to dig a grave. Fruit Snack hears the word dig and is out of Madras's arms, just <laughs> in the ground, making a mess. And Kenya's like, oh, Fruit, okay, uh, are you cool right here? He, you know what, Fruit Snack picked out a wonderful plot for you. Oscar wouldn't have been picky anyway. Fafarin is actually just going to put his arms around Madras's shoulder just for a second. Again, he's hulking. He's eight foot tall. You probably come up Got to it. barely his waist. She's looking up at him like like with her neck craned. He just he offers you a smile and says, um, don't think twice about what they say. People like you, people like me, they look at us like we're less than. But I think that the only thing that really matters is, and he taps himself where his heart would be and says, in here. Is his heart, like, in a weird place? It's right in the middle of his chest. Got it. <laughs> and he, like, Matt. starts to nudge his hand to the left, but when she realizes that he knows that he's right, she's like, oh. <laughs> Madras, with some tears prickling in her eyes, just goes, thank you. That means a lot. He just smiles and says, you got my bag for me, so the least I can do is feed you all up. We'll bury this boy, and we'll all figure out where we're heading to next. And he he just walks to the back of the brazen bald where he said that his little storeroom was. And he's just digging around in there looking for meat. And you're all just digging this grave? Yes. Okay. Let Although... it be known that Max looks at Silda very lovingly for a moment because he picked up Oscar so nicely. As Madras attempts to help dig the grave, she is going to say about Fafarin. That we could all live a thousand lifetimes and not deserve his kindness. You know, Madras, you're a druid, right? So can't you just, like, talk to the dirt and ask it, pack away? I'm not particularly good at it. I just assumed that elf druids, you know. But I heard that, like, all elves are druids. Is that not true? From which elves are you talking about? Madras is very confused right now. So Sildar's just looking at Kenya's very obvious elf ears. And, Kenya does uh, not know she is a half elf. <laughs> he says, "Are you aware of your lineage?" I'm a human. You're I'm a, a tall, skinny human. You're a what? I mean, my mom and pa. Who are both told humans. you that? My mom and pa. They're both humans, as humans they can be. It doesn't matter that I'm tall. They told me that just because I'm tall does not make me any less human. But what about your? And then Madras, like, motions to the ear. She's like, but what about your... Also, she has, like, these horns, too, so she thinks that you're motioning to her horn. She's like, it is rude to bring up a lady's horns. Oh. I think it has to do with my magic. Oh, that's not 
Kenya like looks at Madras and then she looks at Max and she looks at Slow and she goes, Listen, I know I'm from a dirty country, but it doesn't make me stupid. So if I'm not getting something, just say it plainly and I'll understand it. I'm not stupid. Madras <laughs> just looks between Max and, and um, Sildar. Like, what the fuck do we do? Max looks back at Madras for a moment, thinks about it really hard for a moment, and she just kind of spits out, your daddy can't be your daddy. Sildar also turns to Kenya and says, are you religious? Very. I, I took an oath with the Lord to protect my town. Well, perhaps... Tonight, you should sit, and you should pray, and you should ask, Pelor, if your father is is your father. Always good when in doubt to consult your faith. But for now, we have to uh, lay this poor boy to rest. That gets Max's attention back onto Oscar. Tenyo, very, very confused, is watching Fruit Snack dig the hole, and she, like, leans to Madras and whispers for only Madras to hear, Y'all know Fruit Snack's not my dad, right? Yes, I think we were quite aware. Can you can well. you please roll me an insight check? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a, a four. Uh, no, a five. So, uh, Kenya, you look at this cat that's digging away in the dirt, <laughs> and the thought crosses your mind just even slightly. <laughs> that maybe cats have nine <laughs> lives and by the looks of this cat this is not his first life he's maybe looking at his eighth life right now <laughs> you look at this cat and you think you know what maybe maybe in another life fruit snack could be your dad <laughs> Uh, Kenya like leans over and she scoops up fruit snack from the the big hole that he has now dug with Max's help and he's like covered in dirt and she like holds him in front of her so his like little arms are stuck out and he's very like grumpy about being held this way and then she just like stares at him shakes her head and goes we're we're you're getting a bath and like starts like wrestling him wrestling him to the river <laughs> Madras has watched on with immense confusion and like her eyebrows are like knitted together like what the frick did I just witness? Yeah, Kenya's just like shoving her feelings down and is taking her child to go get a bath in the river while she's like <laughs> This grave is dug. Um, Sildar just lowers Oscar into the grave and turns to Max and says Would you like to say a few words? I don't even know what you can say at these things. I used to run away from them when they happened. Fruit Snack would like to say a few words. Fruit Snack can take the stage. And she like steps back and like gestures out as if Fruit Snack can stand in front of her. <laughs> can you can you let uh, Fruit Snack do some meows, bloody I can't Yeah, do. I'm gonna roll for a performance check for Fruit Snack. Mm -hmm. So he just, he rolls a 17 and that's 17. So Fruit Snack just sits at, on Oscar's chest. Meow. Meow. Meow, meow, meow. My little boy. That was so heartwarming. Max looks like she almost might cry again, but she sniffs really, really hard until the tears kind of pull themselves back into her eyes almost. Max will, however, tuck herself in uh, to the side of Dilf because she needs comfort. May the wild mother grant him protection on his journey forth. May the Lord guide you to the light. You just start putting uh, soil back down on top of him. Fafarin has started to set up uh, a little campfire. The brazen bald is starting to dwindle down to nothing. It's just a little smoky. The sun is starting to set. Fafarin will light this campfire and he starts roasting a pig that he just had in the back and has a barrel of ale there and blankets out. He just, he makes this nice campfire and he's used uh, refuse wood to make some chairs and he's got all of the blankets from the back room, kind of the spare sheets and things, and he's he's just roasting a pig. You can all walk over and sit around the fire, enjoy the heat as the sun is going down. Oh, Max would like to pull out her guitar. Kenya has a, she's a fiddle, so Kenya would like to play the fiddle with Max's guitar. Madras is mourning the instruments that were broken before, by the way. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. She's heartbroken um, over those instruments being broken. Madras, can you please do me a perception check? Of course. 
Um, a 19. Um, so you see, you look over to the pile of instruments that's about 20 feet away. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's lots of broken wood, some strings just lying on the floor. You mm -hmm. see, lying in the dirt around all these dead instruments, is a little set of pen pipes. Oh, Madras, with a heavy sigh, because she's sad, she's heartbroken here, um, stands up and goes to retrieve the pan pipes, looks at the remains of the instruments with a mix of wonder for the fact that at least one survived, and sadness, wondering what happened to her companions. And she picks up the treasure and comes back to the campfire. Can you all roll me a performance check, please? Okay, yes. 19. 19. 15. That all passes, so you all, what are wow. you, what are you gonna play? Uh, Max follow Max is very... I'm gonna follow whatever they're doing, but I almost wish she had rolled poorly because <laughs> I don't think Madras will be very good. So Max is gonna start the opening chords to the song Wonderwall, except <laughs> it's kind of slow and drawn out, and it's just like solemn energy to Wonderwall. So you play Wonderwall. Fruit <laughs> Snack is there. He's just meow, meow, meow. Just in time to do it. Yeah, for <laughs> Farron is. <laughs> Foo Farron is roasting the pig. He's just turned around, but he's tapping his foot. You know, he's got a smile on his face. He lost his tavern, but you know, he's with his new friend, so he's happy. Um, Sildar's there. He's just he's just clapping. He's he's never heard this song before ever, but he's having the best time. I love the idea that that the song Wonderwall transcends all planes. <laughs> transcends hey, all of them. That the only song Max knows is Wonderwall. <laughs> So the, the fire is still going, you've all eaten, you're all kind of settling down um, in the blankets, and Fafarin just asks, so, uh, what's the plan? Come tomorrow. Max I'm... just kind of looks at the Dilf and is kind of like, tell them what you want to do. I need to find my friend Gundren. We're gonna deliver your letter. Even if we have to go find this man first, if you still want us to deliver the letter while you rebuild here, we will. Fafarin looks at you, Kenya, and he just says, Thank you. Getting the dwarf back would be best. I'm thinking that maybe once this is over and if you can get the dwarf back, I, I'll pack up my things and I'll go with you to Vandalin. Whatever works best for you. He turns to all of you for Farron does and says, Do you know where to look for the dwarf? We have a general idea. They said something about the castle. Cragmore Castle? Yes, yes, that's yeah. what they said. I I have heard about that. A strange old wizard comes to my tavern once in a while, always talking about a hobgoblin who who called himself King Grawl. Oh, <laughs> we know him, sort of, kind of. So, Do you know where we can find this wizard? This king character set up a home base for the Cragmore goblins near his hut. And he thinks for a second, and he says, I think he lives by the old owl well, just to the west of here. I know where that is. We'll go there? Together? If that's what y'all want, that's what we'll do. Sildar, Sildar nods as well, and he says, Huzzah! After a, a night's rest, we'll leave at first light. We'll go get my friend. Does that mean that we're all going to sleep now? Because I wasn't planning on sleeping tonight. I think rest would do us all well. Max looks very pointedly at Dilf right now. Are you sleeping? Can we get a horniness check <laughs> yeah. on Max? <laughs> Max, Max, can you please roll me a horniness check? 13. Yeah, you're, you're pretty horny for this guy. Let me just roll one for him. Uh, he, he got a nat 20. This man's phoning So <laughs> everybody, you're all settling down. He's picking up what you're putting down. <laughs> so what do you do? She's singing her nightly prayers while they're doing this, BT dubs. Nightly yeah, prayers. Kenya's like, Kenya's like cross-legged by the fire trying to talk to Palor. <laughs> they are praying. <laughs> so Max, what do you do? He's putting up what you're putting down. <laughs> She's gonna have no shame about this. They may all be camping outside, but she has no shame. Okay, um, so Sildar's gonna actually turn to you. Hang on. Okay, uh, and he says, um, maybe we need some more blankets. Would you like to check in the storeroom with me? 
Max immediately is like, yep, yep, I will take the storm for some blankets. Okay. We might be a while. I hear that those blankets are very covered up. Okay, so you head into this um, storeroom with Silda. Can you roll me a performance check, please? Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> it's a five. Just a five? You don't have any charisma? Please tell me there's advantage because he's no, so... No, wait, plus your um, charisma. Plus your charisma. Plus your charisma. Yeah, uh, I say you can... He, he'll, give, he'll give you the help action. You can roll advantage. He'll give you the help action. Okay, it was a 19. A 19? Okay, so uh, you and Sildar have a great time in this this storeroom. Wait, no, no, no. What is Sildar roll? Does he just need more? He got a 22. Okay, they do have a good time. He's got a plus three to charisma, this boy. So they have a good time. Uh, Everybody settles down for a long rest by the fire once they get back. Where we take a long rest, uh, once people are, like, settling down, going to their other places, Mantis is trancing, Kenya would like to sit by the fire with Fruit Snack in her lap and try to talk to Pelor, because now she's very freaked out. Roll me a religion check, please. Nineteen. Kenya, you close your eyes and you're talking to Pelor. We're chit-chatting. You feel yourself going into a semi-trance. This doesn't really happen. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You see the shape of a super buff, shirtless, bearded Santa that you know to be Pelor. Pelor is hot. He's just hanging out with a big gold chain around his neck. Um, If Max was religious, she would try to fuck Pelor. Oh no! What's not religious? I don't think that's religious. <laughs> what What would you like, Kenny? What would you like to ask Pelor in your elven trance? Okay, uh, hey, but um, so is Fruit Snack with me in this trance? <laughs> uh, Fruit Snack is not with you. No, you cannot see Fruit Snack, but you can feel um just the presence of Fruit Snack on your lap. Kenya's gonna try to just like squeeze Fruit Snack's ear. Um, just to ground her a little bit as she looks at Pelor because she is still a little bit nervous around him. They've only commuted like two or three times when he promised to make her paladin. She goes, I hope I'm not overstepping by reaching out to you. He just he just waves his hand for you to continue. So there have been some questions about my lineage. People are maybe insinuating that I'm not human. In your elven trance, you're looking up at your god he turns into a reflection of you. And you're just looking at yourself. Can you please roll me an insight check with advantage? A 17. So with a 17, you're looking at this image of yourself. And it looks just like you, just as you've always seen yourself. Tall, slender, humanoid. But you're noticing the pointy ears. And as you're thinking about your family, your mom, your dad, None of them have those pointed ears. Do any of my siblings have the pointed ears? I have seven of them. None of the seven of your siblings have the pointed ears. So you're looking at the pointed ears and you're looking at these horns. And as you're looking at yourself, you start to glow red. Oh! And out of this (laughs) image of yourself, you see... To the left is, is your mother. She's a lot younger. Um, she looks like an adventurer. She's wearing, you know, adventurer gear. It's not uncommon for young men and women from where you're from, Aldencroft, to go around, kind of spread the word of law. Um, so she's much younger. She looks a lot like you. And then, shoo, out of your right-hand side, you see the silhouette of a man. And you know it's definitely not your daddy. <laughs> he's, he's, no- he's, he's noticeably lacking the gut of my father. Mm-hmm. He's... A lot skinnier than your than your father. The only thing that you really notice about this is two huge curled horns just coming out of the back of his head. And you're watching your mother and then this shadow that has horns like you do just turn towards each other and they just mix and they just go into the silhouette of you and you're looking at yourself again. And then you come out of your trance and you sat by the fire again. Kenya's gonna look down at Fruit Snack 
and she's just gonna quietly be like, Fruit Snack, you still love me if I'm not human, right? Meow. And just he he rolls up on you and he's purring and he's settling down to go to sleep. Can I just gonna say a quick thank you prayer to the Lord. I'm confused right now, but your guidance is appreciated. This is you telling me I need to speak to my my mama. We're gonna we're gonna head to a to a bedroll to go to go to sleep for a full eight hours because she does sleep for a full eight hours. Are Maxwell and Sildog bedrolls next to each other? Oh yeah, you're you're cuddling. Okay, yeah, I just lost you. With that, you all settle down around the fire for your long rest. <laughs> so you all took your long rest. Uh, Madras, you tranced your four hours and then spent another four hours just uh, praying to Melora um, about your choice on letting that goblin live. Mm-hmm. So you all wake up. Fafarin kind of gives you some leftover pork from the night before just so you're nice and rested for your journey. And he points you in the direction of where he said that the old owl well was, where that wizard that he knows lives. Uh, and he says, go to the wizard. I'll, I'll stay here. I'll clean up the best that I can and um, be safe. And Kenya just smiles proudly at him and goes, I'm a wizard. You got it, Madras bro. Madra smiles softly and is just like, please be careful. Take care of yourself. Silda Matthew. is still only wearing Madras's cape. I was gonna ask about that. <laughs> I think that Fafarin would have given him at least a pair of pants, but he just holds up the dagger that he has and just says, Huzzah! And you head west in the direction of the old owl well. Can you please all roll me a perception check? Um, also, sorry if I'm a bit muffled. I am having a little bit of a snack. That's on me. Seven. I got an eight. Yeah, five. You enter a clearing. You can see a stone well. The rocks looks like it's made out of decrepit, covered in like a thick green moss. Right beside it, there's a rickety wooden hut with a yellow straw roof. Um, I roll a... Should we go see if anybody's there? I want to roll an investigation. And this is a place with the wizard? An investigation check? Yeah, I want to look for any, like, traps, anything, like, lurking around, people in the forest, just investigate. Them. Okay, yeah, you can roll an investigation check. Uh, that is a natural 18 plus 5. It looks fine, you don't see any traps. It doesn't seem to be anybody hiding in the woods, um, just this well and this old house. It looks safe, uh, I say we go knock. Alright, after yeah. you. Okay, you go up and knock on the door. I'm yeah. still gonna yell again. Knock, knock. Hey, Wait, hold on. Home? After a few seconds, the door opens and a very old wizard steps out. He looks as though he has to be on the verge of about a hundred years old in human terms. His skin is leathery and thin like paper. His gray, almost white beard is wispy, bedraggled. His beady eyes are glassy and squinted. Can you please roll me a perception check? Eighteen. I rolled a natural. I rolled a natural, natural eighteen. 18. Plus three, so um, 20. Okay. I rolled an oh, 11. 17. 17. So as you look into his eyes as he's walking out, he's really old, he's bent over. It almost looks as though he's in pain. He looks, he squints and looks at you and says, H Hello, it has been many, many years since anybody has visited me at my dwelling. Well, we're here now. You got back problems, bro? Are you all right? We were sent by by Farfrin. Hello. It has been many, many years since anyone has visited me at my dwelling. You Hello. Already send that. Uh, I would like to peer past him and into his house. Can roll it insight or perception. Uh, while you do that, he he turns again and says, "Hello." It has been many, many years since anyone has visited me at my dwelling. Favorin, send can us. You, can Max wave in his face really aggressively? Yeah, you can do that. What did you get on your investigation or insight check? 14. Uh, Inside the hut looks fine. Does the dude respond to this very aggressive waving? He smiles and says, Hello! It has been many, many years since anyone has visited me at my dwelling. Do y'all think he's cursed? He, can he say anything else? Is he deaf? Can you shake your head yes or no? 
Would you like to roll an insight perception or arcana check? Arcana? He just turns her out again. Hello! It has been many, many years since anyone has visited me at my dwelling. Does somebody else want to roll arcana because I got a natural one? (laughs) (laughs) We're just getting real. All real quickly, Maxis, everyone. What is that? I rolled a natural 11 plus 1, so I got a 12. There's something not right about this guy. He has no memory. Maybe you think that he's perhaps poisoned. Can Max How do we make a little, him? like, uh, oh, finger guns wanted... pointing into the place and then, like, brush past him? Can go into his hut. He goes up to Madras, kind of squints and says, Hello! <laughs> it, it's been many, many years since anyone has visited me at my dwelling. No! You've told us that! Many, 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 many times. Madras, can you roll me an insight check, please? Yes, of course. Um, Max would like to go into his hut. Okay. Max go into insight. His hut. Yeah. Do you want to do an investigation check? Yes, That's please. a fourteen. I got a fourteen. He really does not look well at all. His eyes are kind of darting towards the well, and then he seems to kind of snap back into it for a second. Turns to you and says, Hello! It's been many, many years since anybody has visited me at my dwelling. Maxwell? Maxwell? Maxwell is 16. Everything looks fairly normal in the hut. You do notice on the counter there is a cup that has like a black stinking liquid inside of it. Maxwell. Ooh, can she sniff it? Um, on the outside, you can sniff it. It, it kind of smells like rotten eggs. But on the outside of the cup, you do notice there's like a green moss. Dude, tell me you didn't drink this. Maxwell. Jack holds up to her. What? He was looking out towards the well. Do you think something happened to it? Do you think this came from the well and she like holds up the cup? Madras like looks down into the liquid and like she gives like a look where like she's like disgusted. I would hope not, but something's not right, obviously. Is... I guess we could pull up the well water and see if it's the same color. I guess it wouldn't hurt to try. Can they go over to the well and pull up water? You can roll an investigation check on the well. 14. Oh, a one. Oh, no. Madras, you just, you look down, nothing seems, it just looks like a well. Mm-hmm. Max, you do notice that there's a wooden ladder going down into the well. Kenya's gonna have Rootsnuck help out Max looking, and he's gonna cast Prestidigitation and uh, create an illusion of light. So with that, you all can look down into the well as this old man is just stood beside you saying, Hello! Um, You look down into the well and it goes about 60 foot down, but the ladder goes all the way to the bottom. I feel like maybe I should climb down there and see what's, what's up. Do we think that's a good idea? You got any better ones? Not at the moment. Then I'm gonna get down into this well. What about the old man? Can can someone uh, look after him. I don't know. Tie him up. Put him out of his misery. You know what? You know what? Up. Kenya's gonna be like, she's gonna look at him and she's gonna go, hello. Hello. It's been many, many years since anybody <laughs> has visited me at my dwelling. At your dwelling, we're not in your dwelling, and she's going to slowly usher him inside his house as he's just saying this over and over again at her. And she's going to be like, yep, 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 we got to get in your dwelling for you to be able to say this. And then she's just going to, like, shut the door, and then I want to, like, make a roll to see if there's, like, a piece of wood I can wedge in front of the door. <laughs> yeah, you can do me an investigation check. Natural night. There's a little piece of wood you could just wedge it under the door handle. It'll stop him from coming out. Yeah, so so she's like, I handle him. Let's go down the well. And Kenya hops down the well. Yeah, Madras is going down with them. For better or worse. So you all go down. As you reach the bottom, you find yourself in uh, like a small circular room with only one door out that leads into a very small tunnel. There's a smell of damp in the air and it's quiet other than like the occasional drip, drip, drip of water coming through the cracks in the stone walls. Um, Max would like to rub her hand along the, like, floor and, like, look at it to see if it's the same color as that fucking liquid. Uh, you can roll an investigation check. Sweet. 14. 
the moss seems to be the same, but it's not the same color as the liquid. Um, so you can kind of come to the realization that that cup probably came from wherever you are now, but not the liquid. Okay. How far does the tunnel stretch? It is about 60 foot. Can I roll like a perception check on it? Mm-hmm. Can I also roll a perception check on that? Yep, you can all roll perception checks and then kind of tell me what you're trying to perceive. 18 um, and max. I got, I got seven. I'm trying I, to see, like, does it look weird or anything? I got a five. And he's trying to see if Fruit Snack has gobbled up any of that weird moss. Fruit Snack has not gobbled up any of the weird moss, but even, even with a low perception check, it's not harmful. In terms of the tunnel, it looks fine. Okay. Nothing's up with it. Do you want to check out anything, Max? Max wants to see, like, what's at the end of the tunnel. You'd have to move up to the end of the tunnel to see that. Okay. They keep walking forward, I suppose. Can't walk to the end of the tunnel. So when the four of you, because Sildar's there too, reaches the end of the tunnel, you can see into a very large, expansive room. It's lit by small candles that line all of the walls. There appears to be a doorway to the left of the room an open doorway to the right-hand side of the room, and another open doorway straight ahead at the complete other side of the room. Can you please all roll me a perception check? Yeah, so far. Nat one. Six. I got I an eight. not very perceptive. I got an eight. Two of you can re-roll. One can get advantage from Fruit Snack. The other one can get advantage from Sildar. I got a ten this time. Eighteen. Max, as you're looking out, you see that the floor of the entire room is covered in hundreds of metal bear traps. They're all set and ready to snap. Ooh. What do you do? There's uh, a room to the right, a room to the left, and a room straight ahead. But they can't access those rooms without walking through these bear traps, right? If you want to go through the bear traps, you have to do an acrobatics check. The first thing well, Max does is that she holds out her arms. She goes, don't move forward. Madras immediately comes to a stop in place. Kenya is also going to stop, and then she's going to grab Fruit Snack by the scruff of his neck so that he doesn't start walking because he definitely was going to. If you take a step forward, like that's just going to eat your feet. Because she doesn't really know how to describe um, the bear trap, but she's definitely fallen into a bear trap before. Also, are we rolling for acrobatics checks? Uh, well, just they decide... decide where they're going to go first. Mm -hmm. You can either all go to one room, or you can all go to different rooms. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to, I don't think we should split up, but if one of y'all who has good acrobatics and I can tie this bit of rope behind you and if they start snapping, I can, I can possibly help you if you need to get out of the way. So basically I would like to tie a rope around whoever has better acrobatics and then hopefully be able to give them a help action if they need to make like a deck. Okay. Throw. Uh, I, well, cause I just rolled on the acrobatics check. I got a 13. So Sildar nods and he says, uh, yes, I'm I'm proficient in acrobatics and I have a plus two. So let's let Sildar go and I'll tie this here rope around it. All right. Actually, and I I'll hand the end of this rope to Max because I feel like Max probably has much more strength than I do. Uh, what's, your, what's your strength modifier, Max? It is plus two. Yeah, so you're definitely stronger than me. So I'll, I'll hand this off to you. And yeah, I also actually want to keep him safe. We'll, we'll watch. But mm -hmm. where is he going? Which that's, door do you think they need to go to? We can try him one at a time until we find one that... What are we looking for? <laughs> the well. The well. The water. Whatever happened to the old man? Yeah, he drank some black liquid. It was like sludge. It and so I'm trying to disgusting. figure out where it came from. Then yeah, we'll just we'll keep on trying places. We'll until... start right to left. Right to left? Yeah. All right. Sildar, is this okay with you? I think I can handle that. So he rolls. Then go for it. 12 plus 4, so that passes. The DC is 10 for the bear traps. So so he goes to the room on the right-hand side. Are you guys going with him? Because I say that you watched him go all the way there, I can say that you can all follow suit and roll with advantage. After yeah, we would all like to follow. Excellent! I just rolled a 19. Plus 2 dexterity, so I am, I'm at 20. Um, I rolled a 12. I got a yeah. 19. Okay, 13. so you all pass. You all get over to the room on uh, the right. If he gives you advantage, then it's just going to just make sure that you guys can all get over there. Um, are you going to look into the room on the right? Yes. Yes. So you peek through into the room, and you see it's lit by those candles. 
Uh, in the very center of the room is a huge sack just filled to the brim with coins, gold, jewelry, papers, weapons. Can you... What sort of weapons? Can you please all roll me a perception check? 18. Kenya would like to look for... <laughs> Never mind. Three. 15. I got a 15. Kenya with the three, you notice on the bag of treasure just says property of King Grawl. Oh, good God. So with that, Silda nods and he says... I think this is it. I think we have found the Cragmore Castle. Oh. Um, with those other perception checks, Max and Madras, you do notice as you're looking around the walls of the room, you can see little holes just lining around the room all like around. Like arrow slits? Like arrow slits. Max would like to investigate these holes further. Can I perception check it? You can roll an investigation check. That one. Madras is very hesitant and is looking around at the holes and is like, guys, I don't. Guys, like I found a bag. Books. Got a four. Bag. You got a four. Yep. What are you trying to investigate with them? She's trying to see if they're like live or not. I guess. Um, I mean, you cannot. Eye- that's up to you. Do you want to stick your finger with a four? I can allow you to stick your finger into one of the holes if you wanted to. Yes, Max sticks her fingers into one of the holes because Max would do that. Okay, uh, can you roll me a dexterity saving throw? God, 11. Wait, hang on. Dexterity plus one. 12. The arrow shoots out of the hole and just pricks your finger for one point of damage. Max sends to everyone and says, by the way, they're loaded. What's loaded? I found a bag, guys. Was that not obvious, Max? No, I figured that maybe he'd come to dump his stuff and forgotten to load the traps, because I am really eyeing up those gold pieces. Well, let's grab the bag then and get out of here. Did I not just injure my fingers? They could shoot more at us. So why would we grab the bag? That just looks as if she has, like, been totally, like, hot. You know, like, she's, like, confused. (laughs) That just isn't very bright on occasion, okay? Uh, Max is stupid, but when Max gets hurt, Max kind of has one extra intelligence point. Kenya looks between the holes on the wall that she saw because Max got a little, little paper cut, oh. and then looks at the bag and would like to re-roll her perception check of the room. 17. You can all notice this. If you were to go into the room in a way that would trigger the traps, so anything from kind of chest height and above, they'll shoot. Sildar nods and he says, if you would like to go in, I suppose you could stealth. And you let down at Fruit Snack, who is small. <gasps> Can Fruit and... Snack drag that entire bag? Because I'm not here for like two or three gold pieces each. I want all of them. Fruit Snack probably can't carry more than like three pounds. Maybe it isn't worth it then. Oh, wait, 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 wait. You know what I do have? Yeah, is what do you have? Mage Hand. It's a cantrip. I would say with Mage Hand, you can probably go in, take out all of the weaponry that wouldn't really be very useful to you anyway, and just pull the gold pieces out. Yeah, so uh, Kenya casts Mage Hand. A spectral floating hand appears at a point you choose within range. The hand lasts for the duration or until you dismiss it as an action. You can do that. I will just ask you to roll a deception check with advantage, just to see if you can deceive these arrows. It would be 16. You... Cash your mage hand, uh, you pull out all of the heavy items in there that you don't need, all the things of paper, the big gems that are in there, and the weapons, and you just pull that whole bag of treasure out. Does someone want to roll me an investigation check? I will. Oh no, I got a two. Can I also roll an investigation check? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Eleven. You see it's a hundred gold pieces. If you want to put that in your pocket, that is for the party. A hundred gold pieces. Excellent. Silda smiles and said, doesn't seem to be anything else in here. What room next? Which one? The room straight ahead. The middle one. He's going to roll 14, 18. 18. So he gets there. All want to roll with advantage to get to the middle room. 17. 16. 16. That all passes. You all get to the middle room. Uh, You peer in. Nothing seems out of the ordinary as you enter this room. There's nothing inside at all. It's completely barren other than the candles on the walls. And then can you all roll me a perception check, please? I will tell you that the DC for this is 10. Not 18. Oh, I got got a nine. So I'll take a group check. Sildar rolled a 15. They can relay their information. 
Okay, so you look into the room, and then you see the wall at the far side of the room seems much cleaner than the rest of the walls. Unlike the rest of the hideout, there's no moss, no dampness. No moss? Mm-hmm. Just that wall? Yep, and it's completely clear. Max, like, stick your hand on that wall. Want to stick your hand on the wall? Yeah, Max is like to go up to the wall and stick her hand on the wall. <laughs> it just feels like a wall. But it's not damp. The rest of the whole castle has been damp, wet, and covered in moss, but this wall is dry and clear. Mm -hmm. Uh, I walk up and I cast Shocking Grasp on the wall, which is essentially just like lightning to see if we can do damage to the wall. Um, so see if that will work. Just roll me a d20, and if it's 10 or above, you can cast. You can use any spell bonus that you have as well. I then I hit. Okay, you want to roll damage? 11. You put your hand on, you cast Lightning, and then the wall just crumbles down. There's a little secret door. Let it be known that Max pauses for a second after watching this lightning strike on the fucking wall and is like, Dude, what the fuck? Either way, we found the door. How small is the door? It's just normal door sized. Yeah, you don't think the, the door hidden by a rock wall is something that we shouldn't go through? There's a lot of places that we probably shouldn't have gone through that we did. Why should this one be any different? You know what, you're right. Can Max open the door? Yeah, you can go in. I'd like to be chivalrous and hold the door open for everyone, please. You're not going in first? No. Can you step <laughs> through? Um, Madras steps through after Kenya. So that's gone through. Is everybody through the door? Yes. So. Yeah, Max is now going to go through the door. <laughs> and she bows after it. She bows as if she's done them all a fantastic favor. Max is trying to be chivalrous, clearly. Ah, 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 ah. You look up into the room and there's a large hobgoblin sitting on top of a 10 foot tall throne made out of bones. At the, foot of the oh God. at the foot of the throne, two other goblins are wearing capes, and they cackle along with him. Uh, 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 uh. I see you have all outsmarted all of my traps and found our secret little castle. Very good. Very clever. Now, bow before your king. Hell no. Um... <laughs> Max is gonna <laughs> shove her elbow into uh, Kenya and go, Hey, look, it's your daddy. Can you all roll for initiative, please? Yes. I'm sorry, I'm like so shocked by that reveal that I almost like can't think of what Madras would do. Like, that was so oh, yeah. well done. I'm like, oh my god. Kenya got an 18. I got a 9. 11. Max is like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit you up. We're gonna convince this man that he's your daddy. Perfect. So first up in the initiative order is one of these tiny little goblin men. Bow before our king, peasants! And he runs forward and he's gonna attack. He's probably gonna go for Kenya because Kenya refused. He was, she, he was, she was giving some sass. Uh, he got an 11. Does 11 hit? No. Okay, so <laughs> he runs forward with his little dagger and he goes, Bow before your king! And he just... You just probably knock him off with your uh, <laughs> short staff there. And next up, that's you, Kenya. I'm going to hold my action to see what the others do. Okay, so next up is King Grawl. He's sitting on top of his throne out there. He can't reach any of you guys right now. So he just kind of sits there and he's holding his long sword. And he says, yes, stay under my throne where you belong. And he is also just going to hold an action. Next up is one of the other little goblins. He's going to go after you, Max, just because you're next in the initiative. A 12 to hit? It's 12 armor class, so does that hit or does that not hit? It hits. It hits. So he just goes, fuck you, and swings and you <laughs> take four damage. <laughs> That's your turn, Max. Max is going to do something daring, and uh, she would like to try and convince King Grohl that Kenya is actually his daughter. So what, what are you going to say to him? Hey, hey, hang on, hang on. We have your daughter right here. You can't kill her protectors. Do you want to roll a deception check? I hope it's a nat 20. Uh, that was a 14. Damn. <laughs> 14, let me just roll 14. for him. Wait, 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 I'll give her advantage. I'll say, yeah, dad, you, I, I'm not going to bow to you, but you can't kill me. I will also give her advantage if we need it. Um, Madras is going to nod furiously <laughs> in agreement. <laughs> Exactly. Do you this wanna... is your daughter. Uh, that one was an 18. <laughs> he got a 9. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> get our way out of this fight by just being like stupid. <laughs> he looks down at you, Kenya. He knows in his mind that he doesn't have any kids that he is aware of. He's going to keep that in the back of his mind. Max, would you like to take an action as well? Is Max allowed to try and pick up one of these goblins by the collar to stop it from stabbing her again? You can make a grapple check if you want. She's gonna she's gonna try and like lift him up by the collar and just hold him in the air so we can't really get her. But I got seventeen. He got a nineteen. Um so that Aww. fails and Aww. that would be your action. So we're down to Madras's turn. Can I have a layout of like the land again? Just so I can have like a visual of what's happening. Yep, so you have one goblin off to the side who just attacked Kenya. You have another goblin that Max tried to grapple, but he's he's a slippery little guy by her, and then King Grawl is on top of his throne, which is 10 foot up in the air. I'm going to go after the little guy who just went after Max, I think. Okay. I'm going to attempt to, like, shoot him or fi- or kick him. I'm on- I actually- I was thinking about this the other day. I know it's, like, probably not possible, but I would love to, like, punt. <laughs> punt on top. <laughs> so I almost tempted to say that Madras is going to kick him. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to go with. She's going to kick him. <laughs> Okay, so for any uh, non-weapon action, is just a d4, if you would like to kick him. I know I'm not sure. Um, no, no, I want to kick him. just yeah. totally punt him. I'm thinking, oh my god, I really hope this lands. No, I got a one! No. Oh no! So you go to kick him, and he just, he's slippery. He got his little cloak, and he's just, whoop, right out of the way, so you miss him. Can I kick him? I just falls on her ass, and that is her that kick was like aggressive so <laughs> she goes to kick him and she misses and she slips falls on her ass with a loud Oof! i think Fuck kenny you. is gonna use her health Fuck turn you. i think kenny is gonna use her health turn and she's gonna look at she's gonna look at king roll and she's gonna go dad stop this madness and then she's gonna cast firebolt at the slippery guy natural 15 yep that, that'll hit 12 damage uh you kill him and then she's gonna Ooh. look at she's gonna look at King Roll and be like, you know I don't like killing your little friends. To Max keep up the looks sh- at that guy and goes, fuck you, slippery little dude. <laughs> Madras is like attempting to pull herself up from the ground and she's like reaching out for Max's hands and she's like giggling. Max at her will offer <laughs> Max will do it and like, but she offers out a hand, but instead of it being like, uh, Madras's hand can connect with Max's, is she just kind of grips Madras by like the collar or like the shoulder of her like heart? Just, like, just the lifts up. her off. <laughs> He can't see it from up there, but from down there, y'all could see, like, Kenya's biting back tears. She just, she <laughs> hates everything about this. I need to add that I think when Madras <laughs> gets hurt, she makes, like, a Lego person sound <laughs> anytime. Like, she's like, oh! Like, she, like, she doesn't have a normal injury sound. <laughs> For the mention of him being your dad again, can you roll me another deception check? That'll be a seven. So he still has his hell turn. So he's going to look down on you, and he's going to say... So if you're really my spawn, you would attack these invaders in my castle. They're protecting me. I don't know them. I didn't hire them. I know everything. I hired them. She gave us money. I'm one of the best protectors in the city, and this is my boyfriend. He's also one. And she just points at Silda. (laughs) And I'm a great archer. You would really have me, a princess, wandering around without protection? So you did fail your deception what check, but he's be? he's not smart, so he's still going to hold that action and not attack. So we're going to go to Silda, who's last in the initiative order. He's going <laughs> to go for this other goblin um, on the ground right here. He got a 15, so he hits. And he still just has that dagger, but he does three damage on that guy. Back up to that one goblin. He's going to take a swing at... Probably Silda, because he just took a swing at him, uh, and he misses. So he's going to run. He's just going to be like, ah, my friend! <laughs> and he swings and he misses. That. We're down to Kenya again. She's going to look at King Roll and she's like, are you going to make me kill him too? I'm going to give one more try at a deception check. If this I fails, the facade is failed. If it passes, then we can continue with the facade. Can Max, um, like, stand behind Kenya, like, really looking like a protector to give her advantage? If you want to give advantage for this, both of you roll me a d10. If any of you get a dc of 10 or above, you can give advantage. A, so, d- okay, a d20, sorry. The d20. Yeah, the d20. I got a 10! 
Hell yeah. I got a 10. So you can roll with advantage. Okay, that's gonna be a 17. Uh, so he looks down and he says, What are you trying to get out of this? If you really we, are my child. We think that there was a mix-up. And you sent off someone, one of his friends, and she kind of like nods at Sildar. And I was just going to try to come talk to you. And then these fellas came at me swinging. So I would just like to know where our, our good old buddy is. And I'll head out peacefully. Won't even ask you for any child support for all the years that you never even contacted me. God. <laughs> I'm sorry, this looks so Do you want to roll me... King you... Grohl's a deadbeat dad. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag King Grohl's a deadbeat dad. <laughs> Would you like to roll me an insight check on King Grohl, can you? Sure. Oh, uh, that'll be a nine. So just looking at him, you know that you've said the wrong thing. Uh -oh. He was maybe falling for your little facade before, um, but as soon as you mention Sildar's dwarf friend... His expression hardens, and he reaches on top of his head, and he pulls down the helmet that's attached to his crown, and he said, Enough of this. Now you die. I'm going to use my action to cast Firebolt on him, on King Roll, as a range of 120. That's fine. Does he make any saving throws? No, I rolled a 9. It's a ranged attack. Okay, so you go and you try and cast this Thunderbolt at him. Fireballs are at him, and he picks up his long sword and just whoosh! Slices it straight Ooh. through the air, and he says, Ooh. No child of mine would be a spellcaster. That's down. That's kind of lame, though. <laughs> Spellcasters are pretty cool. Do you even know your children? <laughs> Madras is just silent. Like, Madras is so um disturbed by what she's witnessed because she has never seen anything like this. Like, she keeps trying to come up with things to say, but she just, she's like, um. Kedia's, like, standing there. She had, like, outstretched one hand to cast the spell. But now they're just both by her side, fully clenched. Her teeth are clenched as well. She very much so wants to be crying right now. She's trying not to. Okay, so King Grohl, he's going to reach behind him and pull out the longbow that he has attached to his back. And he's going to aim at you, uh -oh. Kenya. Uh, he only got a an eight. That doesn't hit. For just a split second, because he is dumb as shit. <laughs> he thinks, maybe this is my kid. And uh, his fingers kind of slip. <laughs> he just... Completely balls it and just the arrow just crumbles by your feet. And then we're going to go to you, Maxwell. Before you make any moves, can you roll an insight check, please, on King Grohl? 19. So you look up at King Grohl and you don't know who your dad is. <coughs> oh you know that this is not Kenya's dad. And just for a second, you think maybe he's my dad. Oh, my God. oh no. We're all oh, no. King Grohl's kids. <laughs> That's the real plot first. Um, dun, dun, dun. Okay. Dun, dun, if that dun. happens, Max is gonna pause for a moment and go, Okay, okay, that was a lie. It's actually me. <laughs> I'm your child. I'm gonna say, can you roll a persuasion check for me? Because you're, you're not deceiving him. I think maybe you think this might actually be your dad. <laughs> yeah. 18. I would give you a help action, but Kenya would never. <laughs> you got an 18? Yeah. He rolled a nat 20. So, um... <laughs> He's just gonna, he just says, what the hell is going on? And he just stands up from his little throne and actually starts to walk down off of it. And that you're free to take oh. a, an action if you would like, Maxwell. Maxwell is very confused right now. She's honestly a little bit like, this man's a bit of a deadbeat. So she's Kenya's gonna like, turn to Maxwell and be like, he doesn't even look like you, just hit him. We can talk this out, right? As you're doing this, the other little <laughs> goblin is just running around going, King Grow, King Grow, King Grow. He's super excited, super pumped. <laughs> Someone turn off the alarm clock, Jesus. Imagine, imagine just turns towards that little guy, and with the meanest look she has conjured yet, she's just going to go, Fuck you! Shut up! <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you! Max, however, with her daddy issues and being down by even King Grohl as a father, is kind of mad. So she's going to pull out her short sword and start swinging at that motherfucker. Because she's like, if you don't want to claim me, I'm going to kill you. 14, does that hit? That does not hit. Fuck! Oh, we're in trouble, <laughs> people. So, so Max takes a swing, and she's just so angry, she just misses. She has too much anger clouding her vision. Madras, that's you. Madras is gonna go for the guy who is being annoying because she can't stand that little motherfucker at this point. So fuck you, fuck um, you, I'm fuck gonna you. aim to shoot at him. So let me roll my d20. 
an eight. Oof. Oh, that misses. He's um, just Magus he's just running around you, just going, ha ha, you can't hit me. Magis pulls back her bow, aims for him, and shoots, but he's going so quickly, obviously, and just being so chaotic and annoying that she <laughs> misses. <laughs> A slippery little guy. Slippery little bastard. Sildar's gonna take a swing at him though for his turn and he hits. Thank God for Sildar. Oh, no. I'm writing down <laughs> I heart Sildar in my notes. He deserves <laughs> it at this point. He takes a swing, he hits, and he hits him just for three damage, but this little goblin is looking fucked up. He, uh, Sildar <laughs> swings and just, just straight up just chops his hand off and he's just there <gasps> swinging. Ooh. Swing in one hand and one bleeding wrist. He's going, ow, fuck you, ow. That sounds like an alarm clock. <laughs> That's him. He's King Girl's little alarm. King Girl goes, yes, that's right, my little alarm clock man. <laughs> Never mind. I don't want to be your daughter. Y'all are weird. <laughs> this isn't normal, right? No, no not at all. Okay. It's normal for I've goblins. Me. I don't think goblins are normal. <laughs> <laughs> This little goblin takes a uh, swing at Sildar, and he hits, and he hits him for four damage. Is Sildar dead? He's not dead, no. This little goblin Thank just starts you. stabbing him repetitively in the leg. Uh, Kenya, that's your turn. I'm gonna try to hit King Roll with... You know what? I'll hit him with a tilt chill touch. Ah, uh, never mind. I'm not gonna hit him with a chill touch. <laughs> I rolled a nat too. Oh, wait, but... But you know what? You know what? My cat is gonna attack him. There you go. He sure is. He's also, he's got a plus zero to attack. That's fun. I would say with fruit snack because he is so small, you can roll with advantage for him because okay. the hobgoblin's quite large. I rolled not one and a thirteen, and I don't think either of those hit. Neither of those hit. No. The image of a cat just jumping out of your hood and just jumping up on this hobgoblin <laughs> and just running around his shoulders <laughs> is, is quite brilliant. He's just going. Meow! Wow! And the hog goblins uh, just say, sure, "What the fuck I is think happening?" The reason, I think the reason why fruit snack doesn't doesn't hit is because Kenya reaches out and scruffs him and pulls him. <laughs> fruit snack. Now we're down to King Girl's turn, and he is gonna take a swing at you, Kenya, with his long sword. All right, he got a sixteen. Okay, he Ooh. hits. But that's hellish rebuke. So what? So he can roll his Ooh. damage, uh, but then he has to roll a dexterity save. So he pulls up his sword and he goes. Get out of my castle and swings down on you for eight damage. He needs to pass a DC 15 saving throw. If he does pass, he gets half. Okay, he got a 10. That's a. Oh, math. 24 damage. Ooh. <laughs> that's a good one. Okay. Damn. He is looking hurt. But he's not dead. He's oh, not dead. Uh... No. He is looking fucked up. He is looking <laughs> fucked up. Just the just the heads up to everybody else. I am at one hit point. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh my god! So he like slashes into Kenya, and Kenya like stumbles back, and there's like a gash in her neck and her like chest, and then she looks back at him, and then she just like laughs, and then Hellfire engulfs him. And he has not really seen much magic, so he is <laughs> he is rattled by this. He's just he's rattled. So when you do this hellish rebuke on him. He goes back. He's he's bleeding from the mouth. He is mechanically almost dead. He is fucked up. He's holding at his bleeding face, and he just says, "You're too late, <laughs> too late. The black spider has the dwarf in his web in the Neverwinter Woods. <laughs> you better hurry." I think we'll kill you first. Yeah, Max. fuck you, Dad. You, you're going to <laughs> rot. Max, that's your turn. Max is gonna take another swing at this motherfucker because Max is very mad and a lot of her daddy issues are coming up right now. <laughs> she was abandoned, so being abandoned by someone who hypothetically could not even be her father hurts even worse. <laughs> uh, that was a 16, does that hit? That does hit. Kill him, 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 kill him. She does nine damage. Max, kill this guy. Yes, Max is so excited. <laughs> She takes this sword, and instead of her normal, really big swing that she takes, she takes this really short jab into his uh, torso. She <laughs> looks him kind of dead in the eye and is like, You're a fucking deadbeat, and I hope you rot in hell. Um, Fruit snack me out in agreement. Kind of, like, pulls her sword back out and lets his body like drop to the floor. 
Max would also like to loot his body as a consequence of just <laughs> killing him right now. You can loot his body if you want to do a perception check while Madras takes her turn. Yeah. Um, At the moment, there is a little goblin just running around with one hand going, No! King Grohl! King Grohl's dead! Um, ah! Madras, Madras is going to attempt to shoot at him again, so let's see what the d20 says. Um, <laughs> okay, I got a 12. You hit. So I hit. He has, he has one HP. Okay, he just know, has I'm one. He's, he's a gon- I rolled an 8 anyways. Okay, so he's a goner. She shoots him right between the eyes. Just right between the eyes. Right in the skull. Pulls back her bow. Ciao. He, he's a goner. He's a goner. Um, and <laughs> he's I'm gonna, dead. After, after that um, epic kill, she's immediately rushing to Kenya's side to like hold Ken Because Kenya's like fucked right now, right? So Kenya's she's like going to so go down to hold Kenya in her arms and like cradle her closely and like protectively. She's worried. She's worried as shit for Kenya, obviously. <laughs> it hurts, Madras. <laughs> Um, we'll stay in initiative so we can go to Sildar's turn. He's actually, for his action, he's going to lay hands on you, Kenya, and he'll heal you for 5 HP. Never mind, it hurts a little bit less. What did you get for that check on King Girl's body, Max? Um, so you go up and you'll loot his body. He doesn't have anything other than... He's got the crown. He's got the crown. You can take the crown. If you want that, he has the yeah, crown. He has the crown and put the crown on her own head. He has twenty gold pieces as well, and he has a letter in his pocket. Can Max um, read? I would like to point out that Max, firstly, puts the crown on her head and goes, "Do I look like a princess now, guys?" You look like a king. Fuck yeah. Um, and then she kind of holds up this letter and she's like, "Y'all want to read his deepest darkest secrets?" And she can't really read, <laughs> so she doesn't make any effort to like open the letter herself. Kenya takes the letter and she reads it out loud. You open it up and it just says to King Grawl at the top and it's written in very spidery, messy handwriting. Thank you for your cooperation. It was very important that you kidnap these two men. I hope the gold is worth your trouble and it's signed the Black Spider. Ooh. Max is going to look at Sildar and double check that he's okay learning that he was kidnapped on purpose. Uh, would you like to do an inside check on Sildar for me? Sorry, I'm literally writing this down. Cool, by the way, um, oh, I am too. <laughs> Madras is still um cradling Kenya because you know Kenya's like fucked up. Are you all right? I'm feeling better since that man touched me. Did Did you get your um? She got four. Four. I would say mm -hmm. even with a four, you look at Silda. He looks very shaken, and he says. Gundren was very wary about those Neverwinter Woods before we even got into town. It's all right. We're going to get him back. I mean, we can head there right now. Do you think he knew about the spider person? He thinks for a second, and he says, From what he told me, King Beaumont warned him about evil magic being in those woods. It was probably why he asked me to be his companion. I am a paladin. Does anyone know where this dark magic stems from? As far as I know from my studies, dark magic is just the reflection of magic like mine or Sildar's. It's just magic that exists. I don't know if there's there's an origin or not. I think that no, um, people are just corrupt. I see. Well, I know a lot about corrupt people, yeah. Sometimes people are just corrupt. And obviously this, this black spider is causing trouble and has, has our friend... So I think that we should make haste, that we should, you know... Are we going to try and kill this spider? I think we need to go investigate. We have to know what happened. And we need to find your friend. It's kill or be killed. The world is going to try and kill you, so you should kill everyone that you come across. <laughs> and she just, like, shrugs. I... She's like, yeah, this is the best I've got, advice-wise. I like to think killing isn't always the solution. But after dealing with these goblins, they definitely deserved what came their way. So Sildar nods and he says, I definitely think we need to go to the Neverwinter Woods. If that is where my friend is, and that is where this black spider fellow is, and the source of all of the evil, we need to go. Then let's go. Oh, I agree. Would you like to make any perception checks on the room before you head out? Um, yeah, um, I will. Oh, okay. Next, I'd like to loot the other two goblins' bodies, by the way. I got a six. Not particularly my best role. All right, me and Fruit Snack will look around. Kenya got a 12, and Fruit Snack did worse. So, 
It matters you don't find anything. With a 12, you look into the foot of where King Girl's throne was, and you find a sack that's just full of different papers, some weapons, 50 gold, and then two potions of healing. So I got two more potions of healing, 50 gold. And there's a bunch of weapons in there if you want to roll a investigation check on the weapon. That's going to be a 23. There's a couple of weapons and some armor in there. You pick up, it is a warhammer, and you turn it over and you see the hammerfall crest on the warhammer. And I'm going to give the warhammer to Max. Ooh. I can't wield the warhammer. <laughs> I'm not proficient in those kinds of things, but I would assume Max would be as a fighter. Ooh, excellent. And you pick up a longsword that is also in that bag, and you turn it over, and on the handle has engraved Sildar Whole Winter. Oh, Ooh. then I, I give the longsword to Sildar. I was going to keep it, because uh, mechanic speaking, I'm about to take a paladin level, I could use a sword, <laughs> but um, I will give Sildar sword back. Not to be, like, presumptuous, can I ask if there's anything, like, relating to archery in the back? I've just been noticing, like, Magis is probably out of arrows by now, <laughs> as much as she has shot at people. I would say with <laughs> Kenya's okay. very good perception check, there can be a wither of 12 arrows in there that would go in your longbow. Okay, excellent. Because that's very good We need bow. to get you a bow that never runs out of arrows. <laughs> <laughs> Magis so... is going to pocket those arrows. I, like, wasn't keeping track of how many she had. I, I She has... Um, 20, so... Uh, she probably hasn't used all of them yet, but I was like, oh my god, we're probably getting close by now. Silda looks at you guys, and he says, this is much better than the dagger I've been wielding. And he looks over at the warhammer that Max has been given, and he smiles, and he says, that's Gundren's. I'm sure he would love it if you use it to beat up some fellas that have been keeping him hostage. Oh, I like this. She's like feeling up her warhammer at the moment. It's kind of sexual and everyone could be creeped out by it, but she's really yeah, just Yeah, Kenny like, is very bad. uncomfortable. Um, so Sildar turns, <laughs> he turns to all of you and he says, should we head back out of the castle? Hang on. And Max wants to loot the other two goblins. Did you roll investigation? an investigation check on that? No, but I got an 11. Since I'm real, 17. I'm going to hop in with the little kids. An eight. <laughs> This is not Magus's day perception wise. <laughs> with with a seventeen, they don't have anything on them. They just have the daggers that they had in their hands, and then they have those capes that are made out of wolf pelt. Ooh, wait, are they perhaps fruit snack size? You can. Cause they're little guys. They're little guys, right? Like, <laughs> you can fold it down into fruit snack size, and he will get plus one to his AC. Oh hell yeah. And he's going to wrangle fruit snack. He's going to be like, because he doesn't want to wear a jacket. He needs the jacket. He needs the fit. He does, because his ace, his ace is better than mine now. All right, um, are we heading out? Yeah, I think we are. Yeah. So we head out. I won't make you do a skill check to get out. I figure you've already gone through them, uh, the bear traps one time, so you can get through perfectly fine. Um, so you make it out, there doesn't seem to be any other dangers around. You crawl up, you climb up that ladder, and then you're back at the top of the well next to this wizard's hut. All right, Kenya's gonna look around for a moment. She's gonna gonna catch her breath. And then she's gonna look at everybody and she's gonna go, Well, I know the way to Neverwinter. We just go there, we inquire about a giant-ass spider, and we kill it. Shouldn't we check on our buddy first? And she's like, Should we make sure the wizard is all right? Oh, <gasps> I forgot about him. <laughs> Wait, I think all of them like completely forgot. Yeah, well, how about we take the old confused wizard to Fafferin and see what he says? Okay, you gonna knock on the door for the old wizard? No, oh, he's just gonna say the same thing over again. I'm gonna knock on the door. <laughs> so you knock on the door. The old wizard, the lovable old wizard from before, opens it up, and he says, "Hello." It's been many, many years since anybody has visited me at my dwelling. Oh. How are you doing? We know. That's new. That's new dialogue. We are, we're all right. Good. How are you? How are you doing? Dude? Are, you, are you all right? Are you feeling okay? So he looks and he says, Hmm. Are you the party who perhaps locked me in my house to keep me safe? Yes. Yes. We were worried about you. So he looks and he goes, Ha ah! ha 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 ha. 
That's brilliant. Thank you. I fear I had been poisoned for months and months. It seems only yesterday there was no goblins living in my well. There was no dark magic in those woods. What has happened? Uh, That's what we're trying to get to the bottom of to, to ourselves. We killed him. Giant spider. Big spider. Very large. Possibly Scary female goblins. and sexy. Lots of them. So as soon as you mention the black spider, his his smiling face kind of falls and he says, Oh yes, I can detect dark magic. And it was because of my research into this black spider chappy that I was poisoned by the black spider himself. This King oh. Grawl fellow has no magical ability. He must have been passed the potion by the black spider to keep me at bay. Then we're gonna go kill that spider. We're like an extermination team. We get your wait, wait, wait. We get your goblins out of the way. Tell us your story, dude. Why are you here? What's up with your? Uh, how powerful are you? Like, why were you poisoned? Are you gonna kill us? So huh. he he looks at you for a second, and he just his face is all wrinkly and old, and he just smiles and he says, "Oh no, no, I'm just." A man who lives here. I have always lived outside of the Bandari trading post. I, I'm no threat to you. I, I just protect the people that live around and provide them with magic that unfortunately is a little hard to come by in this kingdom. What kind of magic? Can you roll an insight check for me? 15. He smiles and he says, Of course, of course, I am a potion wizard. He turns around, goes into his hut, comes out with four potions of long rest. And he gives you all one each. And he says, oh, no. he says, drink this you so and much. it'll be like sleeping a full eight hours. You get all of your hit points back and all of your spell slots if you have one. And he gives, uh, he gives you a, a little cheeky wink, Kenya. Kenya doesn't know what a wink is. So she's just gonna blink at him real hard. Wait, <laughs> did, did Madras witness the wink? I need to know. For for a, for what I, she's gonna do next. You can do a perception check. I got a two! <laughs> Aww. You think everybody around you oh. might be having a seizure. <laughs> okay. You were right! <laughs> yeah? Then what was that? I don't know. Alright. Perfectly normal. Um, Not at all weird. Hey, dude, what's your name, by the way? He holds his hand out to you, and he says, Lano Albrecht. He holds her hand Lovely back name. Out, like, Maxwell. Nice to meet you, Maxwell. No, no, dude, Max. Just call me Max, don't. Nice um, to meet you, Maxwell. And he looks at the rest of you and just smiles, waiting for you to give him your names. Oh, my name is Kenya Thefine. Kenya? Uh, this is Fruit Snack for Thefine, and Fruit Snack, like, I'm Madras. 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 Yes. And then Sildar says, Sildar Hallwinter. So this wizard looks at you, Kenya, and he says, Are you a person of the spellcasting? Yes, I'm a wizard, but I've made a pact with Palor, so I'm soon to be a little bit more. He smiles, he nods, and he turns around, and he's rooting around um, on his desk. And he comes out and he presents you with this magical shamrock leaf. Okay. And, and he oh. says, I see you have a quarter staff. Add this to your quarter staff and you can add shillelagh to your weapon. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're very welcome. Are you all heading to the Never Winter Woods? That's the plan currently. Yes, sir. Why, you want to come along? We're a band of idiots. He sits there and... You and... could be an idiot, too. He starts he starts laughing and he says <laughs> I am afraid I have spent many months in a haze in my mind, so I'm not in a fit state. I'm I am a hundred and twenty-two years old. I in human years I am human. So I'm not no fit state to brave the woods, but you all seem young and fit. Uh make sure to drink the potion of long rest and I think you could be on your way. I'm in my hundreds Does this too. Does work at any moment in time? If I drink this like mid battle, would it work? 
you're very welcome to save it. And Max, like, just, like, keeps nodding, and she's like, yep, yep, yeah, okay. Kenya's gonna drink her potion, I guess, because I got one spell slot. Max is gonna hold on to hers, but can she drink her potion of healing that she's been saving? Yeah, you can take that. Sildar's gonna take his so he can get his um, lay on hands pull and his hit points back. Okay. I don't think Magic's gonna take hers because she didn't take any hits. Yeah, so I think she's gonna hold on to hers as well. So you can feel free to keep so... hold of them and then you can save them for either yourself or if someone goes down, you can use it for them as well. All right, so we all heading to the Neverwinter Woods? Yes, we sure I'm ready are. to Neverwinter Woods. Let's go. Okay, so the... Max is going to drag her feet on it a little bit, but like, yeah, she's going. <laughs> so as you cross the dirt track, you come face to face with the line of the Neverwinter Woods. As you stare through the trees, you're filled with a sense of dread as the darkness seems to draw you into it. A soft mist seems to float between the foliage, and as you strain your ears to listen to the eerie silence where birds should be calling to each other through the trees, you can hear the faint sound of a growl. Ooh. How sexy Clinton. is the growl? Next one's to, um, head is the, the growl, like, the growl. hot, or is it, like, a scary growl? Uh, you can roll a straight investigation check on the growl. Oh, I'm right. so good at investigation. Seven. Eighteen! Um, uh, twenty-one. Eighteen. So with a twenty-one, the growl is absolutely terrifying. Ooh. I'm shaking in my boots. Madras is shaking in her boots, literally. Like Kenya's just gonna step in. I'm not gonna cast a spell because I'm gonna, I'm gonna think. Oh, I was Max just gonna. Max gonna like raise her sword and kind of take a step towards it, very like stealthy. Yeah, yeah Kenya's like Madras gripping her gonna teeth. Draw her bow and and her newfound arrows, and with a heavy sigh, she's gonna be like, "Well, here goes nothing." And that's where we're gonna end our session. Ooh, oh. drama. Dun, dun, dun. Why didn't you just tell me to wait? <laughs> no, I like the fact that everybody, like, had a thing to, like, go into it with. Like, that was kind of iconic, if you will. I was, I... I entire pause and, like, break because I had to be... <laughs> I don't know. So, okay. Howdy, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in this week for our little adventure. Make sure to give us a follow wherever you're listening so we can keep being pals. Oh, and Fruit Snack wanted me to let y'all know that Apple Podcast ratings are super helpful. See y'all next time.